Have you ever wondered why the divinity of Jesus plays such a crucial role in Christianity? This question is the heart of our exploration today as we delve into the divine titles attributed to Jesus in the Bible. These titles are not just names, they are keys that unlock a profound understanding of Jesus' divine nature and his mission on earth. We will be focusing on three main titles, the Son of God, the Son of Man, and the Messiah. Each of these holds a unique significance, shedding light on different aspects of Jesus' divinity. Son of God emphasizes his divine lineage, Son of Man underscores his human experience, and Messiah points to his role as the promised deliverer. These titles, so rich in meaning, are integral to comprehending the multifaceted divinity of Jesus. So how exactly do these titles contribute to our understanding of Jesus' divinity? Let's dive in. First, consider the title, Son of God. What does it mean, and how does it contribute to our understanding of Jesus' divinity? As we delve into this title, we find it laced throughout the pages of the Bible, affirming the divine nature of Jesus Christ. The title, Son of God, is not merely symbolic or metaphorical, but carries profound theological implications. It points to the unique, intimate relationship Jesus shares with God the Father, unlike any other being. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 34, John the Baptist declares, I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. Here the title Son of God is used to affirm Jesus' divine nature and mission. It is not a title of earthly lineage or status, but a declaration of heavenly origin and divine authority. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 16, Simon Peter proclaims, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This affirmation by Peter is a clear recognition of the divine nature of Jesus, acknowledging him as the Son of God, distinct from all humanity. The title Son of God also illuminates the unique relationship between Jesus and God the Father. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus himself states, I and the Father are one. This statement reflects the intimate unity between Jesus and the Father, a unity that transcends human understanding. It signifies that Jesus is not merely a creation of God, but he shares in the very nature and essence of God himself. In essence, the title Son of God is an affirmation of Jesus' divinity, a testament to his heavenly origin, and a declaration of his unique relationship with God the Father. It is not a title of earthly lineage or status, but a declaration of heavenly origin and divine authority. Thus, the title Son of God asserts Jesus' divine nature and his unique, intimate relationship with God the Father. Now let's explore the title Son of Man. <laughs> How does this title contribute to our understanding of Jesus' divinity? As we delve into the pages of the Bible, we come across the term Son of Man over 80 times in the New Testament, and it's almost always in reference to Jesus. This title holds a profound significance that transcends surface-level understanding. Son of Man, at first glance, appears to emphasize Jesus' humanity to underscore his experience as a human being, and indeed it does. It's a reminder of the fact that Jesus lived among us, experienced life as we do, with all its joys and sorrows, triumphs and trials, he was born, he grew, he worked, he laughed, he wept. He was in every sense one of us, but the title Son of Man carries with it more than just an affirmation of Jesus' humanity. It also alludes to his divine authority and mission. This title is closely linked to a prophecy found in the book of Daniel, where one like a son of man is presented before God and given dominion, glory and a kingdom. So when Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man, he is subtly drawing our attention to this prophecy. It's as if he's whispering, Remember Daniel's vision, that's me. I am the one who has been given dominion and glory. I am the one who has been entrusted with the kingdom. In this light, the title Son of Man becomes an assertion of Jesus' divine authority. It's a way of saying, Yes, I am human, but I'm also so much more. I am the one who has been given authority over all things. I am the one who has come to fulfill a divine mission. Therefore, the title Son of Man underscores Jesus' humanity, yet also points to his divine authority and mission. It is a beautiful paradox that captures the essence of who Jesus is, fully human yet fully divine. A man who walked among us, yet a man who carries the authority of the heavens. The Lastly, we have the title Messiah. What does this mean and how does it contribute to our understanding of Jesus' divinity? When we delve into the title Messiah, we tread on hallowed ground. The term Messiah is derived from the Hebrew word Mashiach, 
which translates to the Anointed One. This title is steeped in rich history and profound significance, and it is bestowed upon Jesus as an affirmation of his divine mission. Scattered throughout the Old Testament are prophecies that speak of a coming Messiah, a savior who would liberate the people and establish an everlasting kingdom. And when we look at the life and works of Jesus, we see these prophecies fulfilled one by one. In the book of Isaiah, for instance, the prophecy tells of a Messiah who would be a suffering servant, bearing the iniquities of the people. Fast forward to the New Testament and we find Jesus who took upon himself the sins of the world, fulfilling this prophecy in the most poignant and profound way. The title Messiah also signifies Jesus as the long-awaited King. The Gospel of Matthew records the wise men asking, where is he who has been born King of the Jews? They were seeking the Messiah, the King of Kings, and indeed they found him in Jesus. But Jesus' kingship was not of this world. He was a different kind of king, one who ruled not by force, but by love. One who sought not to be served, but to serve. His kingdom was not of palaces and thrones, but of hearts and souls. This is the divine kingship of the Messiah, a kingship that transcends earthly power and glory. In the Messiahship of Jesus, we see the perfect blend of divinity and humanity, the divine power to save and the human compassion to love, the divine authority to rule and the human humility to serve. This is Jesus, our Messiah. So the title Messiah signifies Jesus' divine mission as the long-awaited Savior and King, fulfilling Old Testament prophecies. So what can we conclude from our exploration of these divine titles of Jesus? Firstly, we dove into the title Son of God. Not just a simple label, but a profound declaration revealing Jesus as God's divine offspring. It's a title that transcends the physical, implying not a biological connection, but a spiritual one, a bond that speaks to the essence of who Jesus is. As the Son of God, Jesus shares in God's divine nature, embodying love, grace, and truth. He is God's Word made flesh, a divine revelation of God's character and will. Then we ventured into the realm of the Son of Man, a title that seems almost contradictory to the first, yet it's in this paradox that we find a unique revelation of Jesus' nature. As as the Son of Man, Jesus fully embraces humanity, experiencing all that it means to be human, joy, sorrow, temptation, even death. Yet he remains without sin, setting an example of perfect humanity. This title underscores Jesus' dual nature as both fully divine and fully human, a mystery at the heart of Christian faith. And finally, we explored the title Messiah, the long-awaited Savior of Israel, the one who would establish God's reign of justice and peace. But Jesus as the Messiah redefined expectations. His kingdom was not of this world, but a spiritual kingdom, a kingdom of the heart. He didn't come to conquer by force, but by love. His mission wasn't to overthrow earthly powers, but the power of sin and death. As the Messiah, Jesus fulfills God's promises, not in the way many expected, but in a way that brings true and lasting freedom. These titles, Son of God, Son of Man, and Messiah, each contribute to our understanding of Jesus' divinity. They reveal a God who is intimately involved in the world, a God who shares in our joys and sorrows, a God who fulfills His promises in ways that transcend our expectations. They paint a picture of Jesus as God manifested in the flesh, a divine being who lived among us, experiencing the full range of human experience, yet without sin. The significance of these titles in understanding Jesus' divinity cannot be overstated. They not only affirm Jesus' unique identity, but also highlight the Christian belief in a God who is not distant or detached, but one who is intimately involved in our lives, who shares in our human experience, and who offers us a path to true and lasting freedom. In essence, these divine titles of Jesus, Son of God, Son of Man, and Messiah, offer profound insights into His divinity, affirming His unique identity as God manifested in the flesh. Remember to subscribe for more insightful content in the future. Thank you for watching.